<clears throat> Psalm 51. The great psalm of David's repentance. Not David's sin. David's repentance. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. And it's important that God has recorded David's repentance. And it would tell us that it's possible that God records our repentances and has them written down. So there would be a charge of any sin by the devil. There's probably a count. In, hey, here's the date and here's where the blood has been applied. Somehow, where our sins are mentioned by name, they're either completely erased, 1 John 1, 9, or when God checks the record, all he sees is the blood. He doesn't see any writing. Have mercy upon me, and that's what we need when we sin. The judgment and wrath of God is hell. O oh God, according to thy loving kindness, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We love him because he first loved us. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgression. Listen, it's not because how great we are. It's the merciful God that Jesus Christ suffered and died and bled that we may have redemption through his blood. Wash me thoroughly with my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Notice he says, this is David's word. This is, David did not say mistake. David did not say someone else. David did not give any excuse. David said, I sin. We deal with people all the time in, in a public ministry. Well, you know, I'm not that bad. I'm good. Well, you know, it's my environment, they tell you. It's my, my mother. It's my grandmother. It's my ancestry. It's where I grew up. And that's hogwash. And hogwash won't wash you with your sins, only the blood of the Lamb. For I, David, acknowledge my transgression. Do you have to acknowledge it? So David say, hey, yes, I'm the sinner. David is now able to receive a pardon, as I've taught before. No pardon can be received if you're not guilty. Now, if David would say, you know, Bathsheba wasn't watching herself, and she wasn't like that, and, you know, I, that would never happen. We would not have this song. David would not be forgiven. There would be no sure mercies of David. There would be no throne of David for Jesus Christ to sit on because David had blamed it all on Bathsheba. And that's what's important. And when you're dealing with somebody in a public ministry, you better make sure that number one, they are a sinner. Number two, they acknowledge their sin. And number three, they confess their sin to God through Jesus and that alone. And there is no repentance or there's lacking repentance in the churches today. So there are people who don't have the repentance of salvation in the church. That doesn't teach we're all fine, we're all good people. And they say some prayer to God and they're not acknowledging who and what they are. There is no salvation. But Lord, did I say this prayer? Depart from me, work of iniquity. Well, God, I didn't think I was so bad. You are. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Bathsheba, his wife. Look at that. And he's not blaming her. He's saying, every time I see Bathsheba, I'm going to remember. Now, I had someone do a violent act of sin against me. And he's like, can you forgive me? I said, I can forgive you, but I can't forget. I'm not good as God. And if somebody were to say, well, I can forgive and forget, oh, well, I hope you can have that. 
Because sometimes forgetting, forgiving is easy, but forgetting is hard. And David told the Lord, said, yeah, I have sinned against that woman. But every time I see her, I'm going to remember that what I've done to you. And notice he says to God, we're going to see in a moment, against thee, thee only have I sinned. Uh, what about Uriah? What about Bathsheba? No, that's not the case. Our very acknowledgement of our sins is we have sinned against a holy and righteous God. That's number one. Number two are, are the people involved. Listen, when I got saved, I sinned a whole bunch of sins against God. I came to God and confessed the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me. And then I went out. I, I wrote my dad a letter. I said, Dad, I, you, you know, but I'm telling you, I stole money from you. And you tell me how much, whatever it is, I will somehow pay it back. But the main sin, the first sin is, I have sinned against God. Now, they read something. Well, how do you know someone got saved or not? Well, how they react afterwards. And one of the signs of true repentance is, you know what? Okay, I sinned against God. I got to make retribution against the people I've sinned against. I got to make things right with them somehow. And done this evil in thy sight. God, you saw me. Before David's son would ever write, the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold, the, the good and the evil, David said, you saw me. You were watching. People don't want to understand that, that God is watching. They want to think Santa Claus is watching. And what does Santa Claus do when he sees our sins? He still gives us gifts. Well, that's a great, wonderful God, Santa Claus. Santa Claus sees what I'm doing. Santa Claus knows what I'm doing. Santa Claus sees me when I'm sleeping. Santa Claus sees me when I'm away. And I still get presents to me from Santa. That's a great God. But that's not a holy and righteous God. That thou, God, might be justified when thou speakest. And God, through Nathan, said, David, you had caused these people to blaspheme me by your sin. And the baby will die. Also, well, guess who will show up at the throne of God saying, look how great David is. The devil. Job 1 and Job 2. At the point of David's sin, without Psalm 51 ever happening yet, without Nathan coming, thou art the man. David has soiled the testimony of God that I have chose him a man after my own heart. And the devil's like, look what he done. Joab is holding the papers in his hand. I wonder why he wanted Uriah dead. He tells me to call him into Jerusalem. Uriah is in Jerusalem, I think it's a week. And then Uriah comes back to me with orders from the king, say, put in the most heart. What is going on with David? Uriah, did you anger the king? No, oh, no, he tried to get me drunk. Man, he tried to have a couple parties. He wanted me to go home and sleep with my wife. And, uh, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? You ever wonder if Bathsheba ever found out what David did with Uriah, her husband? See all the people now involved? And people would be so foolish to think, oh, okay, I sinned against God, no one's affected. Bull. Excuse my French. Joab was affected. The king was infected. The baby died. Bathsheba's infected. Uriah's infected. The entire troop or whatever the, the company at Uriah. Why did, why was Uriah ordered to die? Why are we in the, and there were people that died with Uriah. And you got, what, what was this whole thing that David's idea to send us into that battle? And from this point on, David's household, phew, takes a nosedive. 
And be clear when thou judgest. God, I sinned against you. And whatever you do to me, you're right. Behold. And remember, he's praying. This is, this is David's repentance. Behold. I was shaping iniquity. Father, God. I'm born of Adam. And in Adam, we all die. The wages of sin is death from Adam. Now watch this. Watch this. And in sin did my mother conceive me. God in nature, in the natural man, I was born a sinner. True. My very nature, who I am, I'm a sinner. So when and I met one guy in my, my life, only one, I've heard other people, I've never sinned. All right, do you believe the Bible? Yes, I do. Then you are denying Psalms 51, verse 5, if you say you never sinned. Because David said, you know what? I'm born in sin. And he's not making fun of his mother, and he's not making fun of his father. He's saying, for the very fact is they were conceived in sin, they were conceived, and you run all the way back to Adam and Eve, were sinners because of birth. That's why there's a virgin birth. There was no man physical involved with Mary, but the Holy Spirit. So that's how Jesus Christ is sinless. And there's the, there's the thing to tell us. Hey, my mom and dad, my human mom, my human dad got together and they produced me. I'm a sinner. Mary had no man. The Holy Spirit came upon her. She had a son that was not of man. Jesus Christ was not shaping iniquity. He was virgin born, so he's without sin. There it is. There's the explanation of the virgin birth that would be coming in the line of David. Behold, thou God desirest truth in thy inward parts. All God wants is the truth. He don't want the lies. The devil is the liar. And when you tell God, well, I'm not a sinner, the man that just said, the man that told me I had never sinned, well, David says I was born in sin, and God wants the truth. And when you say you're not you're not a sinner, you've been born, you lied. And in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. What's inside God? Now, because I'm a sinner, not blaming my mom, but because I'm a sinner and I have sinned. Purge me with hyssop. And that purification found in Leviticus 14, 1 through 7, and Numbers 19, 1 through 19. And I believe, I think, and I could be wrong, but I think that's also what they used when they did the Passover night, but I could be wrong on that. Purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. And God says in Isaiah, Come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made as white as snow. David quotes from Isaiah, and Isaiah hasn't even been thought of yet. Scripture was scripture. That's Isaiah 118. Make me to hear joy. I guess David's not having any joy right now. And gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. You know what? David's in pain. David has been broken by his sin with Bathsheba and killing Uriah. He doesn't think it's well, he doesn't think it's good. He's been literally broken. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. David, you're under the law. There was no animal sacrifice. There was no nothing that you could go to the temple 
and give to God through the Levites that would cleanse you of your sin. The law said if a man murdered somebody, thou shalt be killed. By a man's blood shall thy blood be shed. If a man sleeps with a woman that is married to another man, that woman and the man are to be killed. We read that as a family tonight. And we're going to see a New Testament type of salvation in the Old Testament that doesn't happen to everybody. It's the sure mercies of David through God that today I can and I can commit adultery. Anybody can murder somebody. And if we come to Jesus Christ and repent of our sin and proclaim the blood of God, we can be forgiven. In this day of grace. A man that is going to be or is on death row because he has violently murdered somebody. And before he is put to death by the state. If the man comes into his room and proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ and that man receives Jesus Christ and repents of his sin and retains the pardon of God and when he gets the needle or he hangs or he's shot or he's electrocuted, whatever means the state puts him to death, from the moment he dies, he's absent from the body and present with the Lord. Not so. In the Old Testament. There was no offering for murder or uh, adultery. And there were other sins in the Old Testament, in the law, that also there was no offering. You know, preachers, adultery, adultery, adultery. And how well are your children doing? What do you mean? Well, we read as a family today, if that child grows up as rebellion, stubborn, won't listen, and won't pay attention to you, and all that, that you were taken to the elders, and the elders were to stone him. Now, in the Old Testament, where do you think he went after he was stoned? I think he went to hell, too. There was no offering for that child to come to the temple to get right. Yes, adultery is a great big sin, but so are all sin. I think you're. I think you got a little boasting. Oh, oh, I've been faithful to my. Yeah, but you, you know what? You got other sins too. You don't want to talk about them, do you? You might find your sins in the Old Testament may not be under the blood of the lambs and goats. Thank God today we can confess the blood of Jesus Christ and be forgiven of all sins. Blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart. That's where the trouble is. Jeremiah said the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can trust it? Jesus said out of the heart came adulteries, came murders, thefts, lying, false witness, and a whole list of things. Not just one or two sins. So David is quoting from Jesus before Jesus even quotes. He said, you know where this sin came from, God? It didn't come from my mind. It came from my heart. And the problem is, you're going to deal with somebody who's got pornography. Well, we're going to deal with your head. That ain't where the sin is. And you ain't going to get nowhere. Oh, I got alcoholism problem. Well, first of all, it's not called alcoholism. It's called sin, and we get involved with the heart, not with the head. So David says, oh, God, oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. David is asking God for a new birth before the new birth ever came about in John chapter 3. There it is. So let's go over to John chapter 3 real quick. And let's see why Jesus so 
what would you say, impolitely, <laughs> it's a good word, impolitely address Nicodemus. John chapter 3, verse, we're not going to read the whole thing, but, uh, all right, yeah, verse 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, there it is, new birth, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, very, very same to me, except the man be born of water, woman's water breaks, baby comes, and of the spirit, spirit, get that, get that, get that, get that, get that, because Nicodemus didn't get it. He cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, Nicodemus, that I say unto you, you must be born again. Verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered and said, art thou a master of Israel and thou not knowest those things? Come over here to David. Oh God, create in me a new, renew, renew, rebirth, a right spirit. Nicodemus, you did not get the point of Psalms 51. There it is. There is a new birth. Asked by David. Jesus quoted from David. There he is. David acknowledged his sin. David said, okay, I am a sinner, God. I am guilty. I need a pardon. I need to be clean. And I need to be renewed. Because my heart is wrong. There it is, right there. Nicodemus, you didn't get that. And many lattice see let us see in churches today, don't get that either. There it is. The new birth. A right spirit. And that's what Jesus said. Born of, born of a woman. There's a water. Oh, wait a minute. Come back over here to verse number five. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother. There's the water. There's the water. Oh, Jesse, what's wrong, dear? My water broke. We're about to have David. There it is. You find the new birth that Nicodemus did not know in Psalm 51. There it is, the new birth. David said, I was born in iniquity. I'm not blaming my mom. I'm not blaming my dad. It's Adam and Eve's fault, but you know, I am a sinner. Now, because I'm a sinner, Lord, by birth, I need to have something to done to me by you that I can be right with you. There's a renew of the spirit. I don't have the right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence. That's what sin will do to you. If you don't get right with God. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew. There it is. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now there's an error. Somebody in this church age will run to verse 11. We'll see I lost the Holy Spirit. We are not in the church age. We are under the law. You can't throw the church age here. And yet David will be a type of saint of the church age. Uh, Joab murdered two or three people. And he died and went to hell. There was no offering for Joab. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came and it went. Look at the life of, uh, of Samson. Samson's living, the Bible says, the Spirit came upon him. And Samson goes into his sinly life and all that, and it says the Spirit came upon him. The Spirit left and came upon Samson. So what, what happens when you sin? The Holy Spirit's in my heart. I'm saved. It's never, I, I am sealed. I, I, it never leave me. And I did go back slitting one year, one time, more than a year. The Holy Spirit was still there. Not so for a, for a person under the law. There were some men in the Bible under the law that God gave a special. Moses is one of them. 
We're going to see Moses in glory. Moses murdered a man. Do you remember in Egypt? Well, that wasn't under the law. Did not God tell Noah when he got out of the ark, any man that sheds blood, he shall shed blood too? Restore unto me the joy that I saw that. You know what happened to David? He lost his joy. Until that moment that Nathan came to, you know, I wonder if they know. Oh, no, what's wrong, David? No, leave me alone. Oh, man. You know what I did? I wrote that down in writing, and I had him give it to jo Joab's got to copy that letter. What's he going to do with that letter? I hope he throws that letter away. I hope Bathsheba never finds out what happened. You're either going to die, or is he going to come out of that battle? Anybody going to find out? Anybody in the, was anybody home in the castle when that when that happened? Anybody watching me? What about the guys I sent to go get Bathsheba? What are they going to say? David lost his joy, and that's what sin all the duty. How do you know you really saved? Is we don't have that joy no more because you sin. There are sins right now in my life. It's like I sin. Like I, I don't know if I did last night. I hope I was dreaming. Like, Lord, did I do that? Lord, I don't know. Did I really? Or was I dreaming? Oh, Lord God, I, I, I displeased you. And to know if you're right with the Lord is when you sin and you, you know what? Oh, God, Lord. And you know, Lord, I sin against you. That's the attitude. And that's what's missing from the lay of the sea in church. Eh? You know, you can go ahead and just keep sinning and do whatever you want to do it. It's, you know, you just say, God, I'm sorry, and God will put the magic racer down. That's not how it works. He says, restore the joy of thy salvation. I have lost the fact that, you know, you and I, God, are walking together. And uphold me, lift me up with thy free spirit. Why does David say free? Because it didn't cost him a lamb, it didn't cost him a goat, it didn't cost him a bullock, it didn't cost him oil, it didn't cost him nothing because there was nothing to give according to the law. God says, David, I'm going to save you, I'm going to forgive you, and there's nothing you can give. It's free. That's our salvation right there. Joab didn't get that. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word. Don't you go throw in the church here. Oh, I've sinned. I lost the Holy Spirit. That's not what it says. That's not the time period. David has a special love from God that, hey, David, did you like that? Oh, I love that. Well, there's a there's gonna be Gentiles who are gonna feel the same thing you feel. With very few Jewish people because of my love. Remember we talked about love? All right, so I've gotten right with God. David did not lose his salvation. Joab had. Then will I teach trans transgressors the ways of And sinners shall be converted unto thee. You know what you're going to do when you get saved, according to David, who is not saved by the church salvation of Jesus Christ? David said, and let me quote scripture that David has no idea. He's going to go in all the world and preach the gospel. There it is. And I'm going to tell you, and people are going to call me, I am full of beans and I'm full of it and I'm a liar. If you don't go and tell people about Jesus that after your salvation, I am going to doubt your salvation. Because with the heart man confesses unto salvation, with the mouth confession is made. 
David says, God, you forgave my soul. God, you washed my blood away. I can't shut up about it. There's salvation. There's salvation. David says, I'm going to tell other people about it. Look, look, look. I'm going to teach transgressors the way. Who's the way? Jesus. And sinners shall be converted unto. What is the modern term when people go out soul winning? I converted the soul. There it is. They use the word from the Bible and they have no understanding. There it is. You see the new birth and you say, hey, I got the new birth. Now I'm going to go tell other people about it. Look at that. And we're not in the church age. We are one of the great types of Jesus Christ, David. Deliver me from the blood guiltiness. What's that? The murder of Uriah. We already saw my sin is ever before me. That's Bathsheba. Now, the murder of Uriah. David's laying all the sins out. Oh God, there it is again. The thou God of my ain't my salvation, it's God's salvation. Don't you dare go say, oh, I got this man saved. You didn't do nothing. John the Baptist says, I'm just a voice. God used you. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. My righteousness is Jesus Christ. I might attain the righteousness of God through him. For he was made sin who knew no sin. Now in, in 2 Samuel, I think it's 11 or 17, I forget which chapter. David didn't sing this. You know what happened to David after God gave him that new spirit? After God saved him? After God forgave him from those sins? Man, he had joy in his heart and he's singing all the time. You know another mark of a Christian who truly got saved? He's singing to the Lord. He's got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And that is written long before that hymn was written. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth. With the heart man, with the heart man believes in the righteous. With the mouth confessions. There it is. Open my mouth, shall show forth thy praise. I'm going to tell God, everybody about God. I'm going to tell everybody about you, God. There it is. Now, okay, now here comes David's sin again. For thou desirest not sacrifice. Find me one place in the law where I found where David was to bring something for his sin of murder and adultery. Fine, you can't. It's not there. If a man killed another man, he should shed his blood. Of the blood that shed him. If a man is found with, an, uh, with another man's wife, both the woman and the man to be stoned. There it is. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. <laughs> Nathan said, thou art the man. All right, Nathan, what do I bring to God? That's what he's saying. But David knows. David knows. I'm on the road to hell, and there's no way of coming out. When Nathan, I'm going to, and David got on his knee. David, no, I'll take that back. David didn't get on his knee. I'll take that back. David got on his heart, and he had a heart to heart talk with God. Beyond what I, I believe, David's confession here is a confession that no other man in the world has ever confessed, ever, for God to open up his heart like this. I think anybody would say, well, I had the confession like David. I, 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 I come this close to calling you a liar. Because God has granted David a salvation which the law could not give. And we're not reading Psalms 51 as the trueness of David's heart and soul for God. David is broken. And David is in fear of God in Psalm 51. And when he says, oh God, it is, oh God, 
Oh. I am in damnation trouble. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. There's no altar. There's no brazen altar for David to bring. This is what I can, and this is what David did. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and David is broken. Probably beyond any physical man that's ever been, I, be, I believe, and I may be wrong. But for God to take a lost man in the law, where the law forbid him, and the law says you are damned, and God would forgive him. I think the type of Jesus Christ that David is feeling right now is Jesus Christ was broken beyond pain of any man's suffering going to that cross. Now, David may not have blood. David may not have scar, but David is suffering the brokenness of heart that Jesus felt on the cross for sin. There it is. And I don't think any man, and I, I can be wrong, but I don't think any man could match what David did this morning or this afternoon whenever this happened. I am going to assume that the fact is when Nathan said, thou art the man, I'm going to assume that David turned to water and he just wet himself. And I, I'm saying this, I'm saying this properly. He just fell on the floor and just, oh my, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. There is no hope. There's no mercy. There's no grace. God, I can't offer nothing to you. I don't have nothing to bring to you. God. Oh. Every time I look at her, God, I'm going to think of that sin. I'm guilty of blood, God. God, there's nothing I can do. Lord, my spirit is broken, and a broken and contrite heart. That means a broken, a bruise. And Paul writes, For with the heart man believes on the righteous. There's David. David already said with his mouth, Lord God, if you forgive me, I won't shut up about it. I'm going to tell you the sure mercies of you, God. Oh, God. That will not despise. In verse 10, I need that new spirit, God. I need to be right. I need, I need the new heart. God, the only way you're going to save me now, you've got to give me a new heart and a new spirit right now. And God does. And Nicodemus lost the whole point. Let's look at Nicodemus. Talk about David in the song. Okay, take David and put him back in, in his mother's womb. What's that going to do for David? It's going to be quite painful for his mother. I'm being serious. I, I'm not joking. Nicodemus didn't talk about being going back to baby. He said, what, shall I go back into my mother's womb? I'm, David's full grown. <laughs> what would be a physical new birth good for David? It's not, nothing. Absolutely nothing. But if God were to give him the new spirit and the brand new heart that God will give David, David's in heaven despite his sin. As I will be in heaven despite my sin because of Jesus. I am not even reading Psalm 51 correctly. I am not reading it with the heart and tone that it should be read because I, sorry, have never felt like David completely despaired. Unless you bring me back to the afternoon of, of 
April 21st, 1987, a Saturday afternoon when I realized I was going to hell. At the moment that I realized I was a sinner, I'm going to hell. I got down on my knees and knelt down at a coffee table and I asked God to save my soul. And we call that going back to Bethel. David would be going back to Nathan. He said, what are you talking about? Going to back to the day that you were saved, going back to the moment where you met God as a sinner and you asked God to save your soul. You asked God, to, oh God, there's nothing I can do. Oh, there is something I can do? What is it? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be. I'll do it, God. If that's the only thing, I'll do it. That's going back to Bethel. Oh, God, wilt thou despise? And that's the repentance of the prayer. Do good. And when you give people the gospel, that, oh, I'm good. You know what they miss? They miss the whole repentance part. And you won't have anything to know what I'm talking about if you never had a public witness. Any any public way of witnessing the gospel, you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know when you break down in tears and trying to witness to them and tell them the gospel and tell them they're a sinner and they come up to you, oh, I'm good. You missed it. You missed 17 chapters of importance. Another aspect, do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. What has happened because of David's sin? David's the king. If David never got right, Jerusalem would be affected. The entire Jewish history that we know of would be affected. God would have killed David. Or if God would have had David live, Jesus Christ wouldn't be coming to sit on the throne of David. Gabriel wouldn't say, well, you know, you're going to have a baby. He's going to sit on the throne of David. Matter of fact, uh, David wouldn't be mentioned in Matthew and Luke as the family of Jesus Christ. These two sins... Had God not of the grace and mercy forgiven David, would have changed the whole Jewish everything. Build out the walls of Jerusalem. They would have been torn down if David did not repent and get right. You know what's going to happen when you don't repent and get right and you reject Jesus and reject Jesus? Your entire life is going to be consumed as you are cast off in a lake of fire that burneth forever and you have no value, you have no name, you have nothing in eternity evermore. As you'll be in darkness. Then thou shalt be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteousness. Jesus. With burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then thou shalt offer bullocks upon thy altar. David, don't you bring those offerings anymore to me till you get right. Well, that's the same for the Christian or anybody in the church. Don't go to church. You're not going to repent and get right with God through Jesus Christ. Don't even bother going to church. It ain't going to do you no good. You will not be saved. Don't go to church. That's why I have these church. You know, bring people into church. If they're not gonna do, if they're not gonna get saved, it don't do them no good. Don't give money to the church if you're not gonna get saved. God ain't recording for good. The books were open. And the Lamb's Book of Life was open. If their name was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, I gave a trillion dollars to the church. Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? No. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew. But Lord, didn't I give all the... Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never, but Lord, didn't I go to... Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Don't go. Don't go to church. Don't give money. If you will not get saved, don't give God anything because he won't take it. Don't get baptized. Don't do good. Because it ain't going to save your soul.
You'll be doing it all for vain if you do it without Jesus and for Jesus. I go to church because not because I need to be saved. I am saved. I am going to church that I may grow as a Christian, that I may help other Christians, that I may just see how what my church family is doing, how they're growing, where they need help. I be an encouragement my pastor to have a butt sitting in that pew so he can have someone teach the scriptures. But I am not going to church because God will put me into heaven. No. He won't put me into heaven because of church. I put money in the collection plate because I use the electricity, I use the AC, uh, there, there's gasoline for and there's a salary for the pad. There's everything within the budget of the church that I give money to help take part of running that church because money ain't going to come from heaven to pay for the bill. The pastor is still going to get the electric bill. He's still going to get the water bill. He's still going to get the sewer bill. He's still got to pay for the gasoline. That's why they give money. Giving money, is that going to get me to heaven? No. It won't. I was baptized a week after I was sick. Was that for salvation? No. That was to tell the people of the church. That would tell my, my family and people I invited. Hey, I am now a Christian. And the Bible says that I have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing the Bible tells me to do is I'm to be baptized as a public show to people that I am dying to self, I am coming out, regenerated, a new birth, a new life, and I am obeying the Bible. That's what I'm doing. Salvation, absolutely, correctly, not. Bring people out to church. Bring them out to church. And that guy's going to say, okay, if I just come to church and I do right, God will be pleased. I had a guy, one the, the first church I was in, there was a guy in that church that when he came to church, he thought all of heaven was just because his butt was sitting in the pew. He might as well not go on. And they come to church and they spend all their entire life in church and not receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's not a sacrifice to God approves. When it comes to offering and giving in the church, God says, I want you to give it willingly. I want you to give it a contract spirit. I don't want you to have to give it by force. The law was by force. I demand the tithes. The church, you really love me? Yes, I do, Lord. Then you'll give. I don't need to worry about you. Now, if you have trouble loving God, you have trouble, trouble faith in God, then you would need someone. You have to give. You have to give. You have to give. And if you're giving because they're telling you to give, God's, put it back in your wallet. I don't want it. And you're not going to hear a Baptist preacher very well in the Laodicean church age to teach that. Well, just put it back in your wall. That's scripture. That's, and Paul wrote that to the most carnal church, the Corinthians. You've got to come with God as the fact is, as a Christian, or as a lost man. There is, like David, there is nothing you can do. Nothing. You're dying and going to hell. You need a pardon. You need to break that heart, and you need to confess with your mouth, and you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And only by that are you able to be saved and go to glory. And then whatever you do after that, whatever offerings you bring to God after that, then God starts tearing it down. And God commutes that into gold, silver, and precious stone. There's a lot in chapter 51. And there's a lot in chapter 51 we don't even know. I could not even find anybody that would describe David's I don't even know how to say it. You're going to have to picture David like Jesus. Totally broken. David is without hope and he's without God. God has separated himself. Adultery and murder. God, God doesn't rejoin David until he... he, he God, I, I, there's nothing I can do, God. There's no sacrifice. God. You gotta give me this new heart, and you gotta give me a new, uh, renew my spirit. And God's like, okay. 
Nathan didn't say to say this prayer, did he? Did Nathan say to David, just come to come to temple? How about that one? David has come to temple. No, he didn't. He didn't say that at all. Um, I should have just written, but I don't. Oh. Why can't I find it? Second Samuel is it seventeen? Second Samuel seven, seventeen. Second Samuel eleven. Can't read my writing. Second Samuel eleven. All right, that's the sin. So second twelve. It says in verse 1, And the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came unto him and said to him, There were two men, there's the parable. Verse 5, David's angry, David was angry. Nathan says in verse 7, Thou art the man. Where does it say come to the temple? I'm going to assume that this is in David's living room, David's castle. It was Nathan that came to David. David didn't come to Nathan. When the apostles went house to house in the book of Acts, they were going to Christian houses to Christian houses. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say go and bring the world in to preach the gospel. Hey, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You don't like it, that's absolutely tough, and you can be wrong with God, and you can have wood, hay, or stubble, but that's what the Bible. That's why I delighted to see in church ages the way it is today, because you bring the lost in, and now you have the sign, all are welcome. What? All are welcome? Into... The church. Well, first of all, the church ain't the building. And all are not welcome in the church. Because the church is only saved people. And the only way you get into church is by being born again. We just read that in Psalms 51. And all the hierarchy, like in Nicodemus, had no idea what that was. I know what it is. I've said some things that people are going to get upset, but I'm speaking Bible and you got upset. Get down on your knees and say, Lord, is that idiot wrong or is the Bible correct? I don't see anywhere in chapter 12 where David gets right with the Lord. I don't see no altar. I didn't see uh, Cornelius at an altar or in, matter of fact, they were in Cornelius's house. Cornelius brought people into his house to hear Peter. Paul was preaching to a bunch of people outside on Mars Hill. See, the thing is, we want our church buildings full, so we'll say anything to get our church building full. And that's why we got the fullness of the lives of seeing church eh, where Jesus is standing outside the door knocking because you let everybody inside. And before you get mad at me, you better pray to God and say, is that idiot right? Because a lot of the same in church age, Jesus is outside the church. And everybody else is inside the church. Because the signs say, all are welcome. I saw on the church sign the other day. Uh, electrical sign. We're going to have a big dinner. And then the next advertisement. And we're going to have a, you know, how to, how to lose weight real quick. Don't have the dinner. What are you doing having... Weight loss in a church program. I know they ain't preaching the gospel because I, I know the church. I'm not going to tell you what it is. We put weight loss in the church and not put repentance in the church. 
And people are mad at me for saying what I say, but I'll stand before God and I feel full assurance that I am correct by the scripture. I'll stand before the same Jesus Christ, gold, silver, and precious stone. I've seen all kinds of churches. 